Hi, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be a moderator for today's webinar. I'm Dr. Siti Norila, and on behalf of Unit Penulisan Penerbitan, Bahagian Penyelidikan Jaringan Industri dan Alumni UITM Cawangan Johor. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you with my pantun. Burung tempur hingga merata, sayang merbah di pohon cemara. Assalamualaikum, mula kata awal bismillah pembuka bicara. And first and foremost, I would like to thank everyone for taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. Thank you very much. I also would like to thank uh, our head of program, Encik Hosni Zam Hossein, for today's webinar and all committee members in organizing this program. For the blessings of our today's webinar gathering, let us start with Al-Fatiha. Okay, before we start, let me explain how you can talk to us during the webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, just write them to chat. And we will have a Q&A session at the end to answer your questions. And we will send you the link to the webinar attendance uh, after our honorable speaker's speech. Great. Our topic today is Joint Index Research Publication with Industry Tips and Strategy. And our honorable speaker is Professor T.S. Chemist, Dr. Chan Chin Han, from School of Chemistry and Environment, UITM Shalom. I'm sure all of you eagerly waiting to hear about our today's speaker's biography, right? Prof Chan was appointed as visiting scientist at China University of Petroleum, Beijing in 2011 till 2012, and as chair professor at Mahatma Gandhi University, Kotayam, India in 2014. In present, Prof Chan be technical advisor for the inception of coating fingerprint certificate. The moment I did a search on Prof, I found out that Institute of Materials Malaysia initiated industry academia collaboration to solve an industrial challenge on fingerprinting of polymeric coatings. If not mistaken, this collaboration is considered as the first of its kind in Malaysia. Prof Chan also has published more than 100 papers in international and national reference journals and more than 50 plenary keynote and invited lectures for international conferences and workshops. She has been leading more than 30 industry grants, consultancy projects and research grants. Total research funding received by Professor Chan from international is 27,500 US dollar and local is 5,233,000 ringgit Malaysia. Because of her research and organization achievement, Professor Chan has been the frequent keynote speakers, chairperson and advisory committee in many international and national associations as well as organizations. In addition, she sits on the editorial board from international and national journals. Professor Chan, uh, also holding active international and national professional membership. I, person, I personally impress and admiring your enthusiasm and how working to achieve those success. Congratulations, Prof. So today, Prof Chan wants to share her experience and strategies obtaining successfully international and national grants and collaboration with industry. Maybe some of us already have collaboration with industry, but do not know how exactly how to publish research publications. Don't worry, Prof Chan will guide us today and also by giving the tips and strategy. So to begin this webinar, we are pleased to have Professor TS Chemist Dr. Chan Chin Han to deliver her talk on Joint Index Research Publication with Industry Tips and Strategy. Please, Prof. Hello everyone. Yeah, salam sejahtera. Semla, uh, selamat petang. Very good afternoon to everyone. 
I would like to thank uh, UITM uh, Joho Chawangan Skamat uh, for inviting me. Thank you uh, for Dr. Siti No Ina for your nice introduction and the whole organizing committee. Yeah, today is really my honors, uh, uh, honor yeah, to share with you some of our working experience with the industry and later on that lead to publication. So uh, I would like to share the slide uh, with you. Uh, then slowly I will um, share my experience when we go through uh, the slide. Thank you, Prof. Okay, let me turn to the um, full screen mode. I hope that uh, you can share the, uh, you can see this, my full screen. Yeah, today I would like to share with you the joint in text research publication with industry tips and strategy. So um, I'm Chan Chin Han and a lot of others will call me Melissa because you see uh, for us, our, our titles in front of our name is very long and it's actually uh, a bit like unfriendly to the industry. So uh, for when we, uh, when I have a lot of engagement sessions with the industry, I just call them, okay, just tell them that, okay, you just call me Melissa. So it's look like um, closing the gaps a bit. So today I would like to uh, share with you uh, my journey with the outline as shown here. Or of course, I wouldn't read her one by one because uh, yeah, I hope that uh, to make these sessions to be a bit like uh, friendly as well. So I will start to share with you my academic background where you will see that it is nothing so uh, special. Yeah, I have my um, my uh, degree, yeah, basic uh, bachelor uh, uh, de uh, degree uh, from USM. Yeah, and my final year project is actually on wastewater treatment. So from that research work, we published one paper. And then for my PhD in those days, uh, actually, um, yeah, uh, we, we don't really emphasize so much of publication as now. Uh, at the, in those days, it's like we have to have a thesis that's the most important. So afterwards, we, I have only one uh, publications for my PhD thesis. Um, and then for my postdoc, I did it in USM also. And now there's one publication. If you look at my CV as of now, it is definitely, is, it, it is not even average. It is very low, the number of publication. But I appreciate the, uh, in those years that we are allowed to do our research slowly, yeah, have time to think about our experiment design and we were not rush for publication. I, I really appreciate those days. But right now I know that it is a bit tough because we are talking about like how many number of paper that we can publish even for our PhD. Yeah. So, and how about my academic research? Because most of us, when we finish our PhD, we actually involve, we, we start with this academic research. We, we don't actually, uh, at least me, I didn't go to the industry straight away. I, and I never worked. My first job is actually as a lecturer in UITM Mostly that could be my last job, yeah. And all my work from my PhD uh, to my postdoc and uh, the work that I continue in UITM is on, uh, in general, we just doing the work as polymer characterization. We just characterize the polymer. We don't make a polymer, we don't make polymer in turn into product, it's just characterization. In fact, for many years, I also couldn't know how could I uh, make use of my specialty here turn into something that a product, commercializations and all this, I have no idea. Yeah, but things that I work for so many years after roughly 20 years with patient is polymer. But of course, a lot of us are very familiar with polymer plastic rubber. So for example, for those especially involved in synthesis, if you start with a monomer like this green sphere, we hope to uh, produce uh, a linear change of the polymer. Yeah, this is what we hope. And we thought we have this, but in fact, what we will have either in the lab, in the industry, we could have, let's say, a linear change, but with different length. Or they have different topology, maybe you have 
uh, a loops, you have a branching and all this. All this, even though the same materials, for example, polyethylene, polypropylene, you have very different properties. You have very diff because of the different properties, you have different morphologies, you have different uh, application. And if you mix the two monomers and then you try to produce more complicated structure with the core polymers, and a lot of times, sometimes you have the core polymer as you wish, a lot of time you ended up, uh, you only have homopolymers, yeah? The blue and the, uh, and the green and mix with those like the core polymer and a mixture. But you see in one pot is so complicated and characterizations become very, very crucial. And of course, for organic chemists, this is the nightmare. They will say this is a useless material. But if we can, yeah, if we, let's say we can control in our products, how many percent of this, how many percent of this, uh, the, the mixture, and to tailor our property, that's why we can do wonders. That is why the last, uh, uh, let's say, yeah, 60 to 80 years, polymers become more and more important um, for our daily applications because we start to understand more for this part and to do right, correct characterization and later on application. But for my field, it's always in the middle. Uh, yeah, I do not synthesize any new polymer. I do not make product, but just focus on characterization where this is a rather uh, a narrow scope of the work. But well, this is my training for my PhD and later on also for my work for the last 20 years. So even for characterizations, polymer characterization, for many years, I, I didn't know what to do um, with it, with the industry. Uh, but we just keep on doing a lot of characterizations and put on a lot of effort to make our measurement become like uh, more and more precise. Uh, and, and also to interpret the result and go deeper and deeper, which is very theoretical. For example, last year in 2019, yeah, we organized a thermal behavior polymer a workshop that's using the differential, uh, differential scanning calorimeters uh, yeah, to check on the thermal properties of the polymer in UITM. Yeah, you, you have a look for the participant. We have roughly 120, 40 of them actually from the industry, various industry they come. So, it, it makes us uh, to have the feeling that actually the industry would like to know something that very basic because only when they can do a good characterizations, they can actually make good products that for, com for selling that, the products into the market. So in fact, even though you see a lot of us are maybe in the uh, uh, unity, we thought that our work is actually too, too, too far for the application. But as, well, as soon as we know that what is a bit lacking for the industry, we can actually put in our expertise and share our experience with the industry. So some of them uh, during uh, the workshop, they know my work better. So later on, they have a lot of engagement sessions. Yeah. yeah. So for that workshop, we prepared the slide actually for case study. We, we do not actually present it as uh, like uh, we extract it as a textbook. And then we present because we know that participants, a lot of them are from industry. They, they, ha they have problem in their interpretation that they are, it is challenging for them. So we took some case studies and share with them and how we solve it. And also we give them some tips, how, what should they do uh, uh, when they have this situation. And from there, we think of, okay, and uh, after the workshop, a few months later is MCO. We can't go to the lab. There's no uh, result that we can collect and because no research can be done. So we think of, okay, we, I think our slides that we, we presented in the workshop are not bad enough. Uh, uh, yeah, it's quite good. Maybe we can think of to publish it in a paper, yeah, in, a, in an article for beginners. So it's meant for for example, the lecturer, the teacher in the school, in the, in the UNC to teach. Yeah, because this is our experience in the lab over the years. The common, let's say, the common mistake, the common overlooks, yeah, and 
part of it are the good practice, for example. And, and finally, we have uh, papers yeah, uh, being accepted and we work with other uh, like a, a, a company. This is only a company. Yeah, they, he came to Malaysia and together with us to give a uh, talk on the workshop because uh, this is the, uh, he also can share some uh, case studies for the industry as well as from UNICEF of Ron from France. So, so we also try to work with not only the UNICEF uh, industry as well as the UNICEF from overseas to push up the level uh, of our publication. So um, many years ago, uh, yeah, <laughs> in 1999, I joined UITM. Uh, 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 yeah, and uh, so I, I joined UITM in 2004. Actually, 1999, UITM from ITM turned to uh, UITM. You know, it is not easy, which means when I joined UITM in those days, basically the research culture is not that mainly is teaching, even, even though it's in HQ. So we have a new program. Uh, bachelor of Science of the Chemistry as 202, but now it's uh, renamed as as 222. So when I went into the lab, basically it's very new labs, yeah, uh, an empty labs where we will start with our teaching as well as our research in the same lab. It, it is uh, a bit tough at the beginning. That's why I I truly truly understands the difficulties and the challenge of the uh, researcher in the branch campus. Uh, yeah, we, we went through uh, those uh, hard times. Yeah. So uh, and after 10 years, so we slowly built up our own research uh, lab, but nothing sophisticated, really. You, you look at the labs uh, in this photo, you see that it is quite run now because we can only uh, have a space at people are not using, we slowly put some of our instruments, some of our yeah, equipment there, but very, very basic. We can only do basic work that's after 10 years, nothing sophisticated. Only recently, yeah, we have a new building that meant for uh, the labs for research and the postgraduates, we move in there, then uh, things are a bit more organized, yeah, uh, for this uh, lab, yeah, but that's after 17 years. Yeah, but again, as I said, we have some basic instrumentations that went for polymer characterization, and yet it's not really a very sophisticated and very expensive instrument. No, we, we do not have. When it comes to those instruments, we still have to actually look for the common. And all these instruments are actually also under the faculty of applied science that we also meant to like uh, for sharing with all the uh, UITM user. So how actually we start with, you see, uh, I joined UITM in 2004. In those days, not many people want to do research, but uh, as in those days, like uh, as long as you put up your, submit uh, um, the research proposal, you will get some money to start with. Uh, so we have two small grants to start with, and somebody okay uh, came to me and said, why not you do some work on the polymer electrolyte because that time was a hot topic for lithium ion battery. Have a look. This is 2014, I got the grant. Only 2018, uh, two, uh, 2004, we got the grant and 2008, that was our first paper, our first paper in the INI index journal, that's journal of applied polymer science, four years. Because we we, we have an empty lab, yeah? We, we have, uh, we also ca just came in, we have no students, we have to employ the, uh, final project students to do the work. At the meantime, I have two kids. Yeah, so uh, quite productive. Uh, productive in that sense. So it, it took us some years to come up with the first um output. Um, I, I was a bit lucky that uh, in those days there's not much like um uh, the stick from the uh, uh university because it is obviously the KBI. I, I couldn't really I I couldn't really achieve. Yeah. But perhaps nowadays it's a bit tough for the younger generation, especially young researcher, because once you have the grant, you, yeah, no matter how you have to achieve the KBI at, uh, at the end of the project, it's not after the completions of the project, but that was the case, uh, the luxuries that we have yeah, in those days. But um, I really appreciate that because um, it is really, really not that easy for young researcher. Yeah. So what did I do uh, all these years or what have been, uh, what have I 
uh, what have been the um, that of, of my research work on that. Basically, it's on the lithium rechargeable, rechargeable battery. I work on the membrane separator between the cathode and anode. As we know that uh, the Nobel Prize winner for chemistry last year actually is on the lithium ion battery. You have say a uh, uh, cathode, you have the anode and you have the uh, electrolyte in between, which means this is the membrane separator if it is in solid form. So what is the, the current uh, scenario here? A lot of the commercial battery is actually on the liquid electrolyte, but you see there are, there are uh, issues of flammability. So a lot of work has been done. Uh, I, I mean, uh, not only in UITM, but uh, are a lot a lot of other local UNC or, uh, and also local UNC and also overseas UNC actually to replace a liquid polymer electrolyte to solid polymer electrolyte. Thanks, my work. I'm also working in only the uh, the the solid membrane film in between. I do not actually work on the cathode or anode material. Yeah. So the aim is like, okay, well, we hope that we have the flexible electronics. Yeah. One day we can use because our battery can be also a flexible battery. Yeah. So in fact, I went, I, I, took, I also came to a bottleneck because you see, after the graduation of PhD, I joined a new university, I start my research and I follow my friends who did what they're doing very well in the lab. So I found that um, in 2012, I, I actually almost wanted to give up for this polymer electrolyte. I felt like I'm almost like a copycat copy the other people's ideas and change it from their system, system A, B, C, maybe change the system uh, A, B, uh, E, F, something like change a few of the components. And basically, I just follow what they're doing. So I was very, very lost. Yeah. So, and so happened at that time, I managed to secure a grant uh, under MOSTI, the Brain Game Program. I brought uh, my teachers from uh, Germany. He actually was the guest mm -hmm. professor in USM that I did a PhD with him. So he was in a UITM for five years, yeah, as a visiting professor where he coached me a lot and developed the, 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 the research. Because in those days, uh, the research is not the, the core business, yeah, uh, even though in HQ, unlike now. Uh. So he told me that uh, I should stay and I should continue to find um, my understanding on the system, make, most likely my system that I work with will not be commercialized because it's too theoretical. Yeah, but my understandings on the system will help me to understand for other systems as well. So I took up the challenge, which means I have to differentiate myself with other researchers or else first, we are in a stiff competition to get research grant because it's so similar the way of uh, our proposal as well as in terms of publication. Yeah, it, it will be, yeah, we will come to a saturation point. So we we, we really changed our, our directions. It was a very painful four to five years. Our productivity was very low. Yeah, because we hope like uh, we change and if we go to using the impedance, we really will go in that, yeah, of that. And you see that uh, from 2000, so actually 14 to 2020, we have a lot of papers like just one paper uh, in Q1 or Q2 paper is only about impedance, yeah? And our system is actually nothing sophisticated. We use a commercial polymer, we use a commercial sort, nothing, we don't do anything extra uh, on our, uh, uh, system, but we, we spent a lot of time in doing the characterization that takes our habits and how to do systematic characterizations for later on to regulate the properties. Yeah. And of course, uh, once we are not following the mainstream, I can guarantee you, we have a lot of rejections. We, I, I myself experienced internally, which means in the faculty level, university level, national level, as well as international level at the beginning but slowly we break one but as as long as uh, we 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 did our work properly eventually people see our effort yeah our presentation could be a bit different from the mainstream yeah but that's one way of presentations of our, our findings yeah so that's on impedance where this is very very theoretical until today 
of course, I have one commercial project with it, but not so much. But the, the next thing that we, I'm going to spend a little bit of time to talk about is the FTIR. Yeah. Well, uh, I do not have much experience of FDIR. Yeah, in 2020, one of my master's students actually worked on a, a reaction. We used FDIR and we couldn't really have a good interpretation of result even after the reaction. We know something happened, but we don't know what happened. There's no conclusive uh, answer from the FDIR. So I propose why not we just use a software, the FDIR software compare and say, okay, if the compare algorithm tells us it's not really the same, yeah, yeah, like this. Um, yeah, they said that we uh, reaction take place, huh? But the main supervisor throw the idea and say, no, 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 this is uh, no scientific uh, uh, significance because this this cannot be accepted in, in a UNICE for a scientific research. Okay, I, I have a very crazy idea in those days, but okay, because of this, so we also took up the challenge of going go into something that a bit tougher. For example, if you have overlapping uh, or superimposed uh, peak from the FTIR, then can we separate them and further interpret? We took some time, we didn't know what to do. We were learned with the overseas uh, researcher because in those days, not many local researchers did that. And then from that, uh, we actually interpret uh, the system better because uh, we, we really dwell into it and know the distribution of the sort in different phase of the system that how would that correlates to the properties from there we publish a lot of FTIR study uh papers uh for 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 academic purpose yeah really for academic purpose nothing more than that and then uh in also in something I think 10 years ago I start to participate in the um uh, some of the professional bodies for examples yeah Institute of Materials Malaysia and Institute of Chemia Malaysia and those. But in those days, actually, not uh, even the UNICE or faculty it will take that our participation in professional body as our hobby. Yeah, it is not really, that wouldn't stop and yet it is not also not encouraging, very encouraging uh, for that because our core business still, we should teach. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I felt like um, I, I shouldn't uh, just have a, such a, so a narrow scope in the UNIC because we talk to the people that every day thinking the same as us. So it is very difficult for me to think out of the box. Yeah. So, and I do not know how to, what is something that out of that box also. Yeah. Uh, so, and somehow or rather so eventually I participate in more and more uh, the professional body locally. Uh, of course, I like Academy Professor Malaysia, MBOT, yeah, as well as IUPAC. Those are from the chemistry. You know, this is a body that have, having to do a lot of standardizations. And this is a polycar is on a polymer characterizations. Uh, and somehow later, a lot of my editorial work, then I slowly realized that it because of my involvement yeah, in these professional bodies. I will share with you later on. So yeah, what uh, actually uh, my, my journeys over that and as well as my industry partners. These are some of the industry partners that we are uh, actively, they engage us or we engage them uh, uh, to solve some problems. And then uh, this is uh, our trademark for our um, service or training books. Yeah. So we already registered the trademark because we actually have been uh, uh, selling our our books and all these uh, for some times, but uh, we didn't have a trademark. But finally, we agreed. Uh, we decided to have our trademarks. Yeah, uh, and uh, this is my uh, rubber stamp as a competency certificate because in the industry, when we said that we want to do FTIR, it's not that I'm a PhD holder. That's why I can do an FTIR because it's a very special kind of interpretation. So I need to be certified. I need to have that competency certificate, and I I already got. I developed the competency certificates, uh, certifications, and of course, I myself got 001 number, yeah, for that, which means I'm competent to do the work as well as provide training. So how do we get uh, the, that idea? What does the industry need? Which means this, we use the FTIR to find whether your product has been like a, a genuine product, yeah, or we call it FTIR fingerprinting or FTIR authentications of as long as you have a polymeric product. That's it, from industry, a general idea that work in the academic lab and later on we transfer back our knowledge to the uh, industry. Am I alone? No, it must be a big team that together we work with 
So myself and a Professor Muhammad Kamal Harun is very, very supporting because he's also the past president of Institute of Material Malaysia. He, in fact, introduced me to Institute of Materials Malaysia. He is now the advisor. Until today, we have been uh, working uh, very closely for mainly uh, focus on the research project that with the industry, as well as the students, as well as uh, lecturers from uh, from branches, uh, because uh, two, two of them are actually from Tongkyo. And uh, most of our research work actually, we start at the right. Uh, the beginning is with industry to look at the problem. Instead of we think of the problem that the industry might have, and then we try to provide a solution. We came up with a solution and we approached it. We, we didn't follow that path, we, we followed the other path. And uh, our very big uh, industry fund provider is the public listing company, Server Dynamics. Uh, uh, that later on I will share with you a bit more. Yeah. So of course we uh, have uh, some fun uh, to do it. Yeah. For for the projects, but I think uh, this is uh, due to the hard work for all the project team member and my active participation as a council member as the IKM and the on site as the uh, in uh, this uh, IMM actually did helped a lot for my industry research. I have to say yes. It did have because in this, especially IMM, um, the percentage of the uh, members or the committee member or the council member from the university is actually minority. In the past, maybe 20 to 30 percent. Other of the time, we are talking to the industry. We have to work with them. We have to understand what they are talking and slowly adapt to um, and uh, uh, yeah, and, and adapt to their culture if we would like to work with them. They, they wouldn't really come to us if you're talking like a university lecturers all the time because for them is they don't have so much of time to, to spend uh, uh, yeah uh, just just for talking what they want is immediate solutions for their problem. So in 1913, how should we know? How did we know about the problem? So we organized a con uh, a work uh, a sort of like we call it. Uh, yeah, a forum with the industry. The industry claimed to have problem, especially for the pain deliver on site, especially for offshore. The pain fail, which means when the pain fail means corrosion. Corrosion in offshore will have a lot of steel structure, will cost them a lot of money for repair. Yeah, because you have to bring your, your you have to shut down the plant, you have to bring your workers from onshore to offshore. This a lot of cost. Pain is not that expensive. But the other operation costs that cost a lot of money. So they they are asking, yeah, uh, is there a way to check? You see, in a forum, uh, Prof Karma is from UNICE, I myself from UNIC, he is from UKM, the rest, yeah, is a pay manufacturer, the user uh, from Petronas, he is from Shell, this one from Instrument. Is it, this is a mixture. We, it is not a, a conventional types of UNIC, a conference, a Kenwick conference, no. So this is also the start for, for me to understand the jargon of the industry. So the problem is now they observe failure in the offshore pain. And because of that, they have a lot of small uh, corrosion. And uh, if this, is a, this is a small ball piping issue that's called a linkage. And there could be, uh, there's a, if there is any spark, it will cause explosion. It costs a lot of money. One of the uh, coverage is someone changed the pain formulation from expensive pain to cheap pain. Is there a way to check? So we set up a task force and then we find what is the solutions. So for more than 30 years, they look for solutions, but they can't solve it because according to the SDM standards, they need, they can do FDIR, but th th there is a limitation. Huh? Yeah, you have to use a one brand of the software, one brand of the uh, FDIRs, FDIR and all, everybody must use the same brand. And then you have a spectrum, FDIR come out and you have a, you need a PhD to interpret the data. And this is not practical for industry. It can be done in an academic lab, but this is not practical. But we, we didn't know that. Yeah, we told us, we look at the, the standards, we say, okay, we can do something. We propose that, yeah, you can do something like uh, we can deconvolute uh, your your pain, the, uh, the, the peak and all this with when we know what are what is uh, the comp if someone change your composition we can detect it true enough they said no yeah it is good for for your publication they don't want this but but this is uh, what we know so that is that, that there is a big gap between what we think we can do for the industry what we think they should do 
but this is not what they want. They say, I want something simple. Yeah, so I recall that so many years ago, I got rejections for these projects. Yeah, the, the supervisor said, main supervisor said no, and this didn't work. And I think of why not? And at the same time, I, this is a very important paper, but even though you know, of course, I mean, now so you look at it, it's nothing so special, but uh, I would say that I, this is very important paper for me itself, because this is Dr. Chu Kongqin from Bankers is a pain manufacturer in Kota Kumuning. He published a, a two page or three page article on how he did comparison for batch to batch check. And he used a very simple correlation from the software. It's opened my mind. Yeah, it can be done, right? Whatever that not allowed to be done, in the UNICE, yeah, <laughs> but it could be allowed in the industry to do it. Okay, so why not? So, but of course, we, we have to test the, the water first in the industry. We, we, we organize another forum and call people, the industry people come and do demonstration. We ask, is that what you want? If we can come up with a process stack, yeah, we just do, this is your reference between what you promise your customer to give, uh, this is a pain, we scan, and then this is the subsequent batch that you give, yeah, and then we scan, and if we match it, if it's the similarity, the R is degree of similarity is very high, we say pass. It's as simple as this, no more deconvolution, no more interpretation of all peak. Would that be nice? So immediately, they say, yes, this is something that they can consider, but this is only one or two sample, right? We still need some, some funding for scale up to test different brands of FTIR, different types of pain. So we were lucky enough to have uh, the knowledge transfer grant. We managed to secure one. And uh, then we start, okay, we get more sample from the industry. We do the running the test and uh, yeah, and FTIR test and see how. But I can assure you, we have huge problems. Because for that grant, we have to employ the intern from UITM uh, as a master, and then they have to do this work. This is an industrial driven project, which means the, the solution that we provide is not a conventional FTIR research in academic research. So the, these, these students, they start work and uh, they were very motivated at the beginning, but they were really strongly demotivated after their first uh, defense of their master proposal because, um, uh, yeah, very, very bad comment when I look at it because the students were told if they continue to do this kind of research, they for sure they cannot graduate. So the student have no more confidence. And at that time, we also, uh, at least me, I couldn't convince them that this will work. Yeah. So they're quick. Yeah. Uh, that very sad. I, we, 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 I couldn't. Yeah. But um, because the idea is, this is uh, in the mixing tank of the pain factory. Then uh, we take the sample. There will routine test is uh, the pain factory already have the physical test. We just add one FDIR test to, to confirm that they have the batch to batch consistency. But this in the eye of the panel, it is nothing sophisticated. No, not even for a master project. So from when we talk to the industry, we cannot say that this is a sophisticated method because it will scare them away. So we have to tell them that this is very simple. You just use a software to compare and the result can come up. As simple as it, this is what the industry wants. But at the same time, the UNIC panel will tell you that, no, this is not what should that be. They will tell you what should you do for your industry research. That's our dilemma. So, but. How can we go about it? This is a situation that we stuck. Complaints also no use. So, well, whatever that we have learned, we still have to give that back to the industry. This is what we believe. So, okay, we learned something from the KDP grant, even though we couldn't, yeah, the two, two master candidate discontinue, but somehow a certain part of their work still can be used. We, we took up some of the, the content. Yeah, we come up with, the foundation cost, the first foundation cost to, to have the awareness for the industry, what can be done. Yeah, this is our first course. And then we publish, yeah, our first training books based on, uh, actually based on our publication, yeah, in the, in the, uh, in the journal, uh, in the magazine. So we publish because we have to keep the momentum going. If you do not, if you have a good method, 
but the industry don't know what to use is also no use which means we also must have the expertise to train them so and uh, of course in the industry the pace uh, of the method have to change very fast because a lot of standards a lot of new technologies come in every two or three years we have to come to a new version we have to keep keeping up and bear in mind in those days uh, a uh, 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 books uh, <laughs> is actually not counted in our KPIs. Uh, in those those of course now it's counted, but in those days no. I, I published based on I think it is also like take it as a hobby. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, then then we have to train the people to really not only awareness must really do the job, which, which means in one or two days we train the analysts, and then after they pass the exam, they can run the instrument, interpret the result. We came to that and we published our first books training books on that yeah to do it we, we also try to do it and then we come up with the second editions uh, recently so i got the institute of materials malaysia to certify me as a competence uh, trainer and assessor this is very important for industry in order for us to teach uh. yeah uh, of course in unity we don't need to have this kind of competency certificate for us to teach but for industry course especially compete this is very important uh, certificates that we need to have to show that we are actually specialized in that particular field and also i got the appointment from the uh, training company this mte company to appoint me as a sole cost developer to develop the training material for them and all this in those years actually not so recognized as our kpi annually because you see this book is not published by the UNIC. Uh, uh, in those days, we call it something like I think you you pay now. But the 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 industry will call, tell you that they cannot wait for you pay now after one year or half a year. Then only you come up with a books. You know they cannot wait. And recently we come up with the higher level books, and then we also uh, have the first virtual class last year in two thousand twenty because of MCO. We are not ready to conduct. You see, this is a. We have the hands-on teaching people how to use FTI and interpret the result. And certainly, we cannot do physical class. We have to do virtual class. It's also a challenge, but we managed to overcome those problems, which means we have to, within one or two months, we have to overcome those kind of uh, challenge and then give the solutions to, to, to those uh, training companies so that they can sell. Uh? Uh, their course and we provide the first training you see in in our class i'm um, the trainer yeah we have the trainee that to be trained as a trainer we have from the pay manufacturer we have the in the testing labs we have from the user yeah from the main contractor we, we have much much i would say huh? different background how are we going to teach something that is uh, for this kind of background but this is the way that we have to um uh presents uh, our idea to this group of people so that they learn something and they can do the work in two days, not two months, two days, for example. So, and uh, after the training is uh, for competency, how about we, how can we let uh, this, uh, the, the things that we learn from the industry and be transferred to, to, to wider scope, uh, more people that will know, which means we must come to publication. I can share with you like uh, in the, at the beginning, the industry, they told me, I don't care your publication. It's not, not relevant to us. I just need your solution. I told them, no, no, no. Publication, we still need. Whether in magazine counted by my unit or not, eventually that would be important evidence to show that this is our work, not other people's work. Yeah. So, which means... I, I have for many years, uh, our team have to publish in a magazine that is not recognized by the university, not recognized by the industry. But of course, right now it's a different situation. Both sides also see, it, started to know that this kind of publication, in fact, is actually important. We start to call that in and, and they start to pay attention on publication. Yeah, in let's say in magazine, industry magazine. At the start, 2013, when we start to uh, talk to the industry and know their pro problem and provide the solutions to, together with them, we see our goal is actually a standard must come up. Doesn't matter how good is your method. Yeah, even though you provide training, if there is no standard, it is still can't be really used in a full big scale or across the industry. 
because at the end, if they want to export their products or they want to have a, a manufacturing practice or whatever, it all comes to standards. Uh, writing standard is really not my PhD. I, I have no idea what is it. Yeah. So, but we know that we are heading to that part. Yeah. So we have to start to write standard, even though we don't know how. Yeah. So, and also uh, in 2016 to 2018, for almost two years, we actually had no funding because after the KTP grant, we couldn't have any more grant. Uh, this kind of uh, research, uh, no FRGS grant, we can't apply FRGS grant, it's too basic, no funding, no postgraduate, because no, no postgraduate would dare to do research under us for this kind of project because already and I have a nightmare and uh, from the, their senior, they know that it wouldn't work. Even uh, no RA want to work on that because we also have no, no, no fund to employ them. Only three, uh, I can say, final project student uh, yeah, work with us on this kind of industry project. And every of them had a hard time when they come to present their result. I mean, at the YVA session very very bad comment because the the panel just couldn't take a take take it this kind of a uh, way to uh we talk about degree of similarity or fdi for them is it something so strange it is not conventional type of research and a lot of members especially from the unity left because i think that if why should i do it free for the industry after all we don't have funding anymore i don't want to get involved so we think uh, should should we give up so I talked to Prof Kama, and this is uh, from the industry, the pay, uh, pay manufacturer. We said, we decided we should not, yeah, we try. Because it worked just uh, right now, we, uh, we were at the valley. And then we try to apply the PRGS grant, hope that we can get our, our prototype, because PRGS is prototype. We thought PRGS prototype, okay, we have a training books that set, are selling. It is selling, yeah can be uh, uh, commercial, or uh, not can be, it's all actually commercialized. We actually already generate income to your idea. Can that be a prototype? Yeah. So even if we show to them, it works, it works. Yeah. But no, we fail at the ministry level because they said they never came across. They want something to see that something solid, a product, a prototype, something that they can touch, not something like a concept, a service or a book. So we fail. Yeah, but fail doesn't mean that it stops us because it's, life still go on. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So um, whatever a small little uh, progress that we have, yeah, uh, we publish our work. Let's say um, we publish, um, if, if we have no access to the FTIR, sometimes it's also not easy yeah, to have that access to FTIR in those days because we don't have many FTIR in, in UI, uh, even in, in the HQ, even though there is, or maybe they're more like uh, for researchers, uh, purpose is not for this kind of industry collaboration uh, purpose. Yeah, So we get uh, involved in the research instrument company uh, to help us. They provide the instrument. We ask them to run. And then whatever finding, we jointly publish with them. Yeah, We get the pain from the pain manifest. That, that's all. I have to write the paper. Yeah, A short one, three to four pages in a magazine so that the industry know. Yeah, these this things work to create awareness. And this kind of momentum cannot be stopped. Every six months, like 12 months, three months, I need another, another paper must come so that they know that things continue. So we work very closely with, you see, in the early days with instrument company because we, we want to test with different brand of instrument. And you are there, maybe we have, we have brand A and brand B, we don't have C and D. Yeah, so we have to, work with all the brand, which means we have to use that instrument. That's why our relationship with the instrument supplier must be very good. And all, among the instrument supplier, there are competitors. It is not easy, yeah, <laughs> but we try. So we work with them and we, we discuss, uh, we, we have to work with the pain manufacturer to support suppliers of pain in a way to write the papers or, or the article that will not leak they are trade secret, yeah? So before we get the sample, we got everybody that actually um, understand we are going to publish the result, but we will take care of our, their confidentiality. We will take care, yeah? Before we actually publish, we let those parties to actually screen through our write-up, they feel comfortable, then we publish, 
Yeah. This is one of our approach. So, yeah. And later on, we found that uh, always uh, publish in the magazine, definitely it wouldn't work because we have really bad comment from the Unity panel, whether for final projects or for the uh, master project. So we must go for academic journal. Let's try. So first we try the conference scope, uh, index conference, uh, conference proceedings. Not bad, we managed to get, and then, Okay, we, we also must ensure that all our publication in the magazine can be assessed by other people, not just that in, in our own drawer. So we have to make sure that this kind of publication in the website of the, uh, let's say, Institute of Material Malaysia, people can scan. If you scan the QR code, you can get those publication yeah, in those articles. And also uh, a platform that this is rather new, Global uh, content exchange. This is something that a social media to share the content. We also uh, are through IMM, yeah, to link with them, and then all these uh, article can be searched uh, using that platform. So, and then we say, okay, we'll take up a challenge. Why not we publish our work in the Q3 journal? And we try. Of course, we have uh, a lot of comments, uh, but we manage, yeah. And then the, uh, the this one is on the um, the Q2 journal. We manage only ca come to this stage. You see, we have less comment from the academic panel. Yeah, they see that okay, even an academic journal is accept our work, so they can't actually resist so much and start to actually um, be more liberal on our uh, approach. Yeah, and. Uh, in 2019, we have invitation. This is invitation now uh, from MBOT to share our journey yeah, to the MBOT uh, members uh, for this discovery. So right now, uh, let me talk, share with you about the, the work that we have with the server dynamics, uh, the list, public listing company, where they're actually the fund provider for the most important phase, uh, our mock execution that lead to later on the full implementation. So um, that uh, of course, the funding is quite big because it's talking about technology transfer. So, I, but in fact, our our proposal to them is very short. Huh? I, I can guarantee you, shorter than the FRGS, much shorter and easier to write. Because what we need to tell them is, yeah, this one for wet coating. Later on, at the end, is cheap. Yeah, the testing should be cheap. And then you can get the real-time product validation, which means the result will come out almost instantly. That's all that they want. They do not need to know, they do not really want to know what algorithm that we use, how sophisticated is our model. They are not keen. What they want is at the end, they can use and they can sell. Yeah. So they promise uh, a, a big sum uh, for us uh, to, to, to continue to investigate further. And we set up the task force quickly to call all the company and come in and start the execution, mock execution, which means pilot projects. Yeah, So this is what we want to achieve. If you look at the objective, yeah, to check the, the 40 pain, yeah, which means reformulated pain, uh, fought, uh, which means uh, um, adulterated pain. Yeah. It's very simple, our objective. Yeah, If you put it in the FRGS grant, the objective, they will reject you immediately. You just say that what we want to do is very simple. Just use the FTIR to compare the pain that you receive compared to the pain that they promised in the past, which means when they send for qualification during the tender qualification step. And our promise is no sample preparation, which means easy. Yeah, Even all level skilled worker can do the work. That's our promise for that project. So we call uh, 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 a lot of parties come in. OK, now we are going to develop a standard. We know we need a standard, so please with us. Yeah, so that your opinion be taken into consideration. Uh, when the standard come out, you don't complain. Yeah, because you are part of the uh, user. And because of that, we have to understand the process. We have to visit the pain factory or the pain factory also visit us and all this. We document it, which means no matter after how many years, there are evidence, which means publish in the magazine, we publish in what, uh, yeah, whatever platform that we can. We showcase yeah, how serious is our work. That's one of the way. And then we have the pilot project we did in the warehouse, work with the blessing. We look at the, the process, which step that we should do the checking, how to do it on site, how to do it in the lab. And then we come up with the first standard. Yes, we write the first standard. 
with no experience, but we did that. Yeah. Not me itself, definitely not, but a team of 30 to 40 members. Yeah. So then we have to convince others how good is our standard. So we make, have to make a comparison for all other standards that need sample preparation. A lot of time, except this. But the problem is this SDM standard you is nowhere uh, uh, real time because you need a PhD to interpret your result. We, our standards, overcome all this problem. Yeah. So is uh which means now you can use any brand of the FDI that should talk, which means which means we have to step some steps on how to do the test, how to do the setting in the testing parameters so that all these results can talk to each other, whatever brand that you use. And at the end, it would be very simple to interpret the result. And then, of course, then they say that, okay, oh, oh, if only you monopolize the market, only you know how to do, only your lab know how to do, they don't want it. It's, this is, Unity people will not think that, right? Because we, we this is none of our concern, but this is the industry request, you know? So we have to go convince Serum, we have to convince the uh, commercial lab, please be with us. Let your analyst to be certified so they can run it. Of course, they will always say that there is no business as yet. Why should I spend money to uh, certify my analyst is the uh, money? And yeah, it's always chicken and egg. It is always very, very, very tough at the beginning. But once they start to have the business, hmm, they will come to you, but not at the at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So but we managed to convince them after some years, some of them, some business already started to roll into the company. So, uh, yeah, today, uh, this morning, I just have a meeting with the uh, Standard Malaysia. Our, the first uh, standards on the paint using FTI already been migrated to Malaysia standard. We always uh, finalized and I was appointed uh, as the chairman of the working group to lead to this uh, finalizing the the Malaysia standard, which means very soon, we hope that by, at the end of this year, we can come with the first Malaysia standard, could be the first standard in the world that, um, using the FTIR to fingerprint uh, pain using our method, simple, you know, really a simplified version. Yeah. So, which means this, this, this method can be used from the lab through, uh, yeah, the go up to the field, work where you can have the real-time product value, which means you can have the result almost instantly, almost after, immediately after you screen uh, your sample. And it can be done using Wi-Fi, you know. Now, nowadays, uh, all these, right? Even the instrument that have all, if you connect to Wi-Fi, the, the result can be scanned and sent to the crowd and processed. All this can be done already. In the past, it's not possible, but now, yeah, it is coming. And of course, uh, for, for us to manage to uh, convince the department standard to come up to the Malaysian standard is one very, very crucial point. That is, this one, we work together with the patronas and share, we convince them our standard work. And in your specification, you already mentioned you need to fingerprint your paint, but you have no way. Now we have a way and, and to do it and uh, put it up in their specs, this is a requirement. What does that mean? And this is, in fact, for commercialization. If we manage to push out this, our products or service or whatever that we have in the buyer guides, buyer guides or buyer technical specification, uh, uh, in my opinion, that could be stronger than I have a patent. Why? Because this is a technical specification when they sign up for tender project, all their vendors, must comply. If they must comply, they have no way but come to, let's say, to your ITM or to my team to source for that service. I may not need a patent. And it is very clear, Petronas told our team that as soon as we patent it at your ITM, they are not going to adopt it. Because why? It is against violate, violate their company policy. Yeah, Because they don't want to go into trouble that there's only one provider, a service provider or, or someone that only one party, they will run into problem. They will not allow it. So for many years, we can't actually patent our work because of that. We it, to, to us, in order to commercialize, it is more important in the aspect than the patent. The patent, we will solve the problem later if we have chance. Yeah. So, and we continue to publish our finding 
every three months, two months, yeah, six months we publish, yeah, small little part. And we normally publish with the company. We talk to them, okay, don't worry, we will not leak your secret, we'll keep your confidentiality. But there's a certain part that we can share with others to show that there's advancement, how we solve the problem if you have these things. And all these publication, right? In fact, we take because these are all these are case studies, huh? We have this uh, problem, then we solve it and become a case study, we publish. And in fact, later on, we all turn all these case study into our training books because training for industry user is about case studies. So we don't waste. And uh, yeah, so of course, uh, for a uh, magazine also, we cannot always publish magazine for important, serious work. We also need to publish in the ISI journal where we are planning to do so is already under review. We, we are praying now. You see, a lot of things that we are didn't pay attention for academic research now become crucial for industry research. For example, yeah, fingerprint region for FDR, those who work with fingerprint, you know that different product, they will say that because of different functional group, you have different fingerprint region. And because uh, our student are PhD holder, master holder, or whatever, right? We can we have no problem, we are chemists, we can we can remember what product for one fingerprint. But we are talking about, let's say, a, a foreigner, skill worker, old level skill worker. They cannot remember. They will make a lot of mistakes. So how to solve it? Which means we have to come up with a universal fingerprint region. And when we did a lot of background work on that, we also need to compare. If we just compare this one universal and with different uh, fingerprint region for different products, work or not. So we have a thousand to how many thousands of data, then we have to track on different FDIs, software, different hardware. Yeah, this kind of work. And this is not chemistry a lot. This is not polymer characterization already. This is analytical, uh, analytical chemistry. And also not really analytical. Some more is maybe we have to do a lot of statistics. None of this are our field. And these things that I can tell you that even when we look for uh, those analytical chemists uh, that work on uh, academic projects, those statisticians who work on academic projects, when we have this problem, they propose something that we also cannot use because the industry will not accept our, our way. So at the end, we have to engage a private labs <laughs> to, to give us consultation how to do this statistical work. We work with them and we show that, in fact, we managed to come up with a universal fingerprint region. I think this is a a serious piece of work where we can hope that we can publish in the ISI journal. And even now, uh, we have the degree of similarity. Uh, bear in mind, this is a lot of problem that actually we have in, in the academic research also. If you want to report uh, your value of two decimal point, three decimal point, four decimal point, maybe it's not that, that problematic for academic research. Uh, if you report like this, like this, or like this, uh, it's just a value. But for industry, they are very particular, especially if we are talking about acceptance criteria. Below this value, I reject your sample. Above this value, I accept your sample. If you have a don't round up, round up, well, especially a borderline, right? Oh my God, that is the issue. That's a headache, you know. That's why they are very particular. Tell me how many decimal points. So which means we have to check on the positions, accuracy. It is also not, not my fail. So, but we, we, we try, but with some understanding on the instrumentation, for thermal analyzer, so we, we managed to, to, to do a lot of statistical calculation like this and that. And then we, yeah, I think this is a serious piece of work we can do. And then also uh, the, uh, the pain management, you're a bit afraid. Okay, you say that you can use this uh, method to check my product, whether it's genuine or not. What if I leave my products there for some times and things change, you know, and then you cause a serious uh, rejection of my project that will cost billion and million and dollar and ring it like that is it's unfair for us. So we have to show them that our method work, whether as long as your product don't change, you keep in a proper way, yeah, uh, it will not cause a serious rejection. So these are all like not a conventional uh, lab, uh, academic labs uh, kind of questions, but uh, a very practical uh, yeah, uh, problem. So we, we show to them that if you simply store your pain, uh, don't take it even though within the lifespan, it fail, yeah? which means you should reject. After it fail, it won't pass your performance test. Your pain, uh, even after applied, it will fail very, very badly. And one very important point is right now we see maybe there are some potential for commercializing. I mean, further, further commercialization is those expired pain. 
if it's not open still in condition and keep well and if we use FTI to check if it's still good now have high degree of similarity as what they promise you can apply this pain and the performance is still good we have that set of results already so which means it is very cost effective of course that is a very crude still very crude if we have more result on that that could also uh, a very very important point for uh, for um for applications huh? yeah so of course if you just talk about wet paint is not enough wet paint is intermediate products you know in order for a uh, wet paint to to have a very consistency for the formulation you have to control your raw materials yeah change the raw material you, you will change the wet paint if you have the wet paint you also need to make sure that the end product work is consistent so not only one standard that we come up eventually we come up we think that also yeah raw material is also important the dry coating important so these two standards already come up and this the last standard is in fact very important for coating failure analysis we started to have inquiries from the company yeah, on that so uh i would like to come now come to the technology transfer and patent so uh, for this uh yeah uh, as just now i told you server dynamic actually the fund provider for the whole um uh, ftir test for them you see the front part you see that um it's, it's not much that uh, that can do commercializations except that um yeah the training yeah the training part that they, they, they could yeah um yeah because i'm only a trainer i don't have training company they have right but the important part is how can the result be assessed anytime anyway not only the scale worker on site but at home by the superior which means a lot of it must come in for us of course i'm not from it none of my team member but we roughly know what we need how should it works and we will have to provide the idea to them and later on we will transfer the whole idea to them uh, to the company then they have to further develop this is really out of our expertise I, I have to recognize that not everything that we can provide solutions yeah but we know what can be done that's why recently we spent a lot of time to understand uh, the uh what they call it iot uh, internet of things yeah so is this method to uh, be used only for pain no no anything uh, with organic compound yeah yeah food or uh, cosmetic like uh, for example this bottle yeah if this is a genuine bottle this is a fake bottle using the fti you just scan yeah you have low degree of similarity fail yeah if you let's say cosmetic lipstick this one you buy from parkson this one you buy from darling street yeah you, you scan it looks alike uh, colors also alike but you scan uh, they are not the same so it's this very quick uh, uh, uh authentication tools for us so um then a uh, problem solving yeah and uh not only for pain because uh as i told you pain is only one of the materials that we work the my expertise or my team is on characterization so these are uh, company jatis uh, so they have some problems for their toner yeah uh for uh, the the printer toner one of the components of uh, is a polymer they have some process uh synthesis problem they ask for an opinion how to characterize from the beginning i told them i, I cannot do synthesis work this is really not my thing, but I can do characterizations. So they came to me and then we have a project. Then uh, the thing is that I just want a batch to batch reproducibility. Of course, at the beginning, they are so uh, concerned about publication yeah, because they're so afraid that secret will be leaked out. So I uh, have to assure them that, okay, we can blind certain part. We cannot, we do not need to reveal all. Of course, the best formulation will, we will not publish we will just uh we will publish the result of the second best or the third best uh, formulation and and the batch to batch consistency then after the yeah, uh, uh negotiation with them with one or two months then finally they they agree yeah we should have to come up with the whole draft of the paper if maybe the company will disagree then we cannot do anything but finally they agree and then we publish in a one q3 uh journal because this kind of industry work because too many things that we cannot disclose, huh? sometimes it's very difficult to push up to Q1 and Q2, yeah? So, and then for this Polycar, the international collaboration, and then when I attended the one conference, I presented impedance studies. Yeah, it's very, very academic. I thought nobody will use it. But um, I was there, and I look at this lady, and she's from the company. You wouldn't say sometimes huh, in the conference, actually, they're, they're 
people from industry they are there to get idea so she told me that she's from uh onic or uh, yeah from france that problem for the cheese sample okay i work on the polymer and he, she has cheese i never work on a uh, 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 food sample they say that impedance as uh, uh, instrument seems to be very interesting for them they never try and let's see what we can do and then they send the cheese sample to your itm we run uh, so they hope to have uh, make that cheese uh, close to laughing cow cheese. I think a lot of us are very familiar with this product. We can buy it in the supermarket, huh? laughing cow. They have their own cheese, different formulation. They, they wanted to know that how far, especially the water contents, any simple way to do it. Yeah, we try to use the impedance. We have the result and that's all that they need. But I further interpret it because I have the result and uh, Together with uh, my teacher, we further interpret the results. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a dielectric properties of cheese, and then we have the 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 whole manuscript come out. It's very very um, I would say, a uh, theoretical. Huh? It's uh, it's really no no fun to read it because a lot of formulas, and uh, we sent to the company. I said, uh, looks, uh, we we don't ex expose a secret about the chain uh, cheese formulation. We just talk about the result of the end product. Is that okay? So they say, okay, fine, uh, they agree. So right now this one we submit to Pure and Applied Chemistry should be Q1 journal uh, now under review. So uh, which means uh, we always have to engage uh, with the company to tell them uh, our intention uh, uh, very in a very sincere way. Yeah. So um, sometimes, uh, yeah, and, and actually most of the time they agree. So for academic research, uh, for my work, it's actually nothing so special if you look at it. I don't make polymer and I just mix polymer, mix together different commercial polymers. If you have particle, we just add in different morphologies for different application. This is all rather well known. The idea is a lot of my uh, academic work is uh, work for the membrane separator for the lithium ion battery. So the idea is, uh, okay, if you have different uh, patterns of the materials, if I add in the salt there, I guide the salt into a certain phase so that it moves better from one side to the other and then enhancement of conductivity. That's all for my research. Nothing so sophisticated. I really have to tell you, not sophisticated at all. It is very, very fundamental and we, we just do characterization. So, yeah. And uh, that's how we publish our work. Yeah. But uh, we, we try to work with other university, especially when it comes to certain part of characterization that we do not have or we are not good enough in uh, UITM or other local university. Let's say for this paper, yeah, we work with uh, Martin uh, Ludet University of Halle, yeah, where uh, uh, Suhaila actually have a PhD short term attachment there. This is a paper that uh, more like a conventional type. We have uh, one system, we have different uh, instrument uh, characterizations. We each of the interpretation are not really go in deep, a bit shallow. A bit, this is the trend of some of the paper. We are like that. But the other one is the melt, uh, melt rheology of uh, um, a blends also. We do not have the instrument in UITM because uh, it's already under repair. So we can't wait. We work with instrument company. Uh, we don't work with in, uh, university, we work with instrument company, TA instrument. We work with them, we use the instrument, and later on we think that our, their work is, uh, yeah, the set of work is good enough. Then we publish, we also get the company to uh, agree. You say, look, uh, you, uh, the way you support us are now, uh, <laughs> the rewards is uh, one uh, publication in the journal, and they are happy with it, and we publish uh, with, with them, this one. And the other one is that uh, this is uh, the whole papers are, uh, uh, on the dielectric impedance, yeah, uh, and this paper in polymer testing uh, uh, is uh, the whole paper is in using DSE one instrument, which means if this is a paper set, uh, this kind of paper that we 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 have a one paper, full paper is only on one instrument, which means we really have to go in that all the discussion, yeah. So uh, yeah. And then uh, this one, uh, we work with the uh, University of Hamburg, which means certain part, like for example, to determine the molar mass, especially for epoxidized natural rubber, it's not that simple because we, we found that there are micro gel inside. Uh, no, not many people in Malaysia that can really help us to do uh, fractionations or uh, come out and, and, and analyze it batch by batch. They have the facilities in Hamburg. So we engage them, yeah, and then finally we come to 
join. We hope that this one is under review. We hope that we uh, we can, yeah, yeah, we should have uh, much. We hope that uh, it can be published very soon. And now uh, talk about uh, the international collaboration and membership and the publication. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually what I show you just now is uh, some of the organization that I um, active in. In fact, I, I have more uh, participation, but not so active uh, because we have limited time. I, I, I have limited time. I cannot be active. A lot of organization only can focus on a few. Yeah. So uh, from Institute of Materials Malaysia for publication, yeah, because they have a training and certification scheme. You know, normally people from the museum are good in proofreading yeah, and writing. So that's actually our skill. And people from the industry, they can talk a lot, they have a technical competence, but right come to writing, they maybe they need us. So I contribute my service. Okay, I help them to come up with, with uh, like arrange all the course content, course syllabus, and we publish one book. Yeah. Uh, then every year we have to uh, renew the content. Later on, we said, okay, we shouldn't be the one who be the author. The first version will be author because we did really from the draft. The second one, we think that, okay, other inputs also come in from other committee members. We should call ourselves as editor instead of uh, author. And we also, uh, I'm also be uh, like uh, appointed as editor for the magazine, this magazine called Materials Mind. And with Institute of Chemo Malaysia, yeah, this is a Scopus Index a Journal, Malaysian Journal of Chemistry. I'm the editors and the magazine, Perita IKM, I'm also appointed as editor. And in some years, we IKM did a uh, um, survey on the polymer education, the syllabus in public UNIC. We call all the UNIC and give us some feedback. Yeah, and then I saw that that's uh, quite a good piece of work. Why don't we publish in academic journal? This is Q3 uh, journal. So we published that survey uh, in that journal. And of course, I also present in the conference yeah, for under polymer education. So we get it done, yeah, get it published. Then uh, for this uh, poly, uh, poly car organization, uh, they organize conference. So I make a presentation on impedance. Yeah. So I share my slides on their website. Then later on, we talk to the IUPAC because it's for educational purpose. I can also sh show my slide to share with others. And of course, with other speakers as well. Then we turn the slide of that uh, for the workshop into one article, yeah, and then for sharing to uh, the uh, the to the general public. So we also turn a lot of our educational kind of work uh, to publication, yeah. And uh, later on, they say that um, this uh, journal is still a bit tough for beginners, even though we try to make it for educational purpose. Can we write something that really for beginners, yeah? And uh, for uh, also good practice. So uh, last year, because we cannot go to the lab, so okay, we write something that um, we do not, we publish, uh, we try to prepare a manuscript, we do not need to go to the lab, we also can do it. So it's for beginners, for impedance, yeah? We come up with uh, this one already accepted, this one um, should be accepted because we already have the comment, it's, it's quite minor, yeah? And all this, we uh, work together with, uh, this is uh, from UNICE uh, Groningen from the Netherlands. Huh? So for IUPAC, yeah, uh, this is the Chemistry International uh, Magazine. So on and off, I also publish um, some of the um, announcement, uh, reports, event, uh, event reports in the magazine, and occasionally be the guest editor of one or two issues for the pure and the black chemistry. And also together with other uh, team members, we talk about our involvement in IOPAC for polymer science. Uh, let's say we have one paper in this SES journal, Journal of Chemical uh, Education. And uh, last year, uh, we have this uh, studying goal, 100 years um, of chemistry. We also published like, what actually the, um, the progress and let's say a prediction for our perspective in the next uh, 40 or 50 years in polymer science. Yeah. So uh, almost the last part of my presentations here is the commercializations. Yeah. For the commercializations, what are the models that we use? Uh, bear in mind, uh, I, I mentioned many times that I do not have products. Even the books, I do not print it myself. Or let's say my books is in electronic copies. Yeah? So, uh, we have certification development that we work with Institute of Material Malaysia. And we have, uh, uh, which means it's like uh, we set exam questions 
and they pay to us uh, how much per set, how much per questions we, we, we provide service to them. Uh, we also provide uh, training materials to the training company. We receive a uh, royalty, yeah. And then uh, we have the testing report, yeah, uh, where uh, we provide a service to the company where they have failure analysis, yeah. And then um, we have, like, us say, uh, or they have some issue for their products. We, we run the testing, we prepare uh, reports for them, yeah. And we have the technology transfer that I talk a bit more with Server Dynamics, where we transfer the whole technology to them. We also provide consultancy, uh, Norimax, yeah, for the pain, Jati is for the pain toner. This one is the contractor for pain. And this one is the eco power for the uh, uh, ta uh, rubber recycling. Huh? So it's uh, my role is also for polymer characterizations. So and then how about our innovation competition? Because commercialization, uh, well, as a researcher, we actually couldn't escape lah, huh? participate in um, this kind of commercial uh, innovation competition. Our strategy is a bit different from the others. Actually, for many years. Our group never participate in any of the innovation competition except in 2019. You see, we actually started our work very early with the industry, but we, we say nothing because in those days, I, I felt like we are a bit immature, yeah, to, to share too many things at the beginning, yeah, uh, because uh, other people can pick up the idea very soon until we are very mature, uh, yeah, we know that we actually uh, can do it. Now it's uh, okay, no secret, I can let you know what I'm doing. So it's actually a lot of times uh, we actually went for innovation competition is after we commer after commercialization. Then only we the our objective to to participate in innovation com competition is not to commercialize our project. Yeah, yeah. At least for my team, it's not like that. It's to help those companies to boost up their sales. Yeah. Uh, because already commercialized, but uh, to, uh, we, we started to actually uh, do a lot of pitching because our work was actually um, uh, more to really apply. Uh, so we did quite well for external competition because, uh, for example, the MTDC and for national level, we are, we, are, we got the second runner, our uh, first runner up, which is second place with a uh, cash prize. Uh, even the pitching in uh, UITM also when uh, uh, the judges from external, we did quite well, yeah. But uh, internally, we, we couldn't do well because uh, one criteria that we can never fulfill, patent, where is your patent? So we, <laughs> when we said, uh, okay, we already saw uh, our products to a company, we, we, uh, or the technology, we cannot have patents uh, immediately, you get the cross then. No, we, we just got a silver, we cannot get gold. Huh? So, and then uh, also for Selangor Expo, we got, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that for that category, we get cash price, which I think second place or third place. For the bigger price is uh, we have more experience. Huh? The MT, uh, MTE, Malaysia Technology Expo, we have a special award. I was told that this is a bit tough to get it. Uh, we are very lucky. So this few uh, awards, actually, I myself actually have uh, leading the teams to do it. But later after this, uh, so I passed to my team member to play a role. So they are also doing very well. Like this, this is only a master students. Yeah, she participates student grade IDEX uh, 2020, the best uh, video awards uh, she get. And then uh, Nuru Fataha in IDEX uh, 2020. So she also got a gold medal. So this would be almost uh, the last slide. You see, at a glance, I might have uh, our team might have involved a lot of things. But if you uh, have a closer examinations, you will find that we no no we actually very focused. First things, our work uh, uh, we we are very focused and said we do not involve in operational matters. Operation matters. Uh, what does that mean? For example, if you have training books, I just take care of the training content and come up with the book applied for ISBN number. I do not involve in printing of the books. I do not involve in selling of the book. I do not involve in getting a participant to attend the trainer. I, this is a training company work. I, I do not get involved. If I, I, my role is to be the examiner, I just set the questions. I do not take care whether the, uh, the, the set of questions will be taken by anyone. Somebody have to arrange the exam. 
uh, I do not get involved in those uh, part that I, I'm not so good with. If, if I need to get uh, something like a company come to me uh, to have the failure investigation for pain, if they have need more tests, I go there, okay, you why not you go to the labs, uh, the commercial lab to help you for the other tests, but I will work with the commercial lab to only part of uh, on the part of the FTR where I go with. Instead of I have to take up so many things, uh, the site inspection, site sampling, all this way, I, I, I really do not have the expertise and have no time. And also, we are not cost effective. Huh? Our, our costing will be very expensive because it's not cost effective. It's not our core business. Everything, our, but, uh, our quotation will be very high. So we only focus on one, two things, yeah, for, for at least for me or for my, for my group. Polymer characterization, whether academic research or industry research. No synthesis, no processing because we are not good in that. Other people are doing way better than us. Yeah. And for publication, constantly after our, our always objective is after we do some work, we must have some publication. Either is set exam questions for certification examination. We publish as a training books. We publish as technical articles, book chapters or research articles. So if you ask me, uh, what is our core, um, uh, 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 activities do characterization and publication doesn't matter for industry or for academic research. These are my postgraduates. These are my collaborators. The only part of it, and not I cannot list every uh, everything. Yeah, this is uh my contact. You can scan and uh, text. Or uh for my um yeah presentation. That's all. Yeah. I hope that it is uh, uh, not too long. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor uh, Chai, for the informative and interesting talk. Thank you so much. And I think, uh, and I think uh, now uh, we'll come to the Q&A session. Um, okay. So for our audience, if you have any questions, okay, uh, please uh, mm. write your questions uh, in chat uh, so you can join our discussion and write your question in the uh, chat box. Okay. Okay, Prof. Chan, just now you mentioned, uh, okay, um, uh, which part? Uh, Based on your experience, uh, which part is the most, uh, I mean, uh, critical part to convince the industry, okay, in uh, publication? Because uh, as you mentioned just now, okay, uh, they are not uh, considered. They do. They don't consider publication as the main, as the main thing, okay, and uh, they prefer a uh, solution from us and not the publication. Okay, so yeah. how how do you convince industry? Um, uh, every time when I started uh, the work with them, I will tell them frankly, yeah, I can uh, try to provide them solutions. If I can, I try my best. But if in the case that I need to use some of data for publication, because this is this is the KPI that we cannot run away, yeah. Um, I will try to use the data to, to publish. That, that one I tell them upfront. Yeah. And uh, before, of course, I, when I, I, I will prepare the, the draft. And before, whether their name is included as an uh, author or even acknowledgement, sometimes they don't even want to be acknowledged because they want to be secretive. Uh, they don't want people to know that they're in it. Yeah. So, but I will let them to have a look. Yeah. And uh, we, we need to know the sensitivity, which part that they are very particular. For example, for pain, right? Um, uh, we, you, uh, you cannot uh, give full formulations. You cannot give, let's say, the pain formulation of 10 ingredients. Eh? You, the most maybe you can give three to four, the main one. The rest you have to, uh, uh, you have to take it up. Yeah. So uh, those products that actually especially fail, you, we cannot publish because they say that what if people know that it's their product, even though eventually, right, uh, we do not mention it, but they, they also said that no secret in this world. So 
uh, those fail result we have to be a bit careful so whatever that we can publish normally is the good result but not the best uh, if they are going to commercialize their project and sell it they don't want to let people know what are their best formulation because they don't want people to come copy so we have to start sort of like choosing something that in between but i think our uh, uh, important is to engage them from the beginning and let them know that it is our uh, our responsibility as uh, from UNICE to publish as well as slowly we need to educate them as well publication if that can be this also good for their products because not many company afford to do research and publish in a magazine in journal and uh, we can do it free for them why not have a free ride at the beginning it's not easy slowly they say ah also my name is there not bad oh my company name is there why not so the resistance will get uh, lower and lower I, I think right now the industry act in fact they are more ready unlike let's say 10 years ago Okay, uh, we got one question in our private uh, chat box here, Prof Chan. Yeah. Okay, uh, our friend uh, questions about the publication fee. Okay, so Prof, uh, based on your experience, the publication fee is sponsored by industry or uh, by our institution? <laughs> very good questions there's a lot of tricks to do it huh? because uh, a lot of publication they are open access right so we have to pay five thousand six thousand forget about it the industry will not pay for it they will not yeah because why should they pay after all they they already said they say that i spend man hour i give you sample and you still want me to pay for publication fees yeah. they will ask you forget about it and then come to you new site they will say that okay this is industry research right well uh also no unic uh, uh grant to support it and we should not pay for the publication fees we got stuck somehow frankly speaking so that's why a lot of my consultation work the fees that i earn eventually we uh, at least my group while well, we didn't get it as our own or we didn't put we use that money to do our publication. It's a bit of sacrifice, yeah? And, and we also didn't want to bother the industry how we do it, we just pay. And and a lot of them, because I'm sitting in a, a lot of the advisory board of the uh, journals and all this, and uh, sometimes uh, with negotiations, yeah, we can get a free publication, only occasionally, I think three or four, then we need to pay the publication fees. A lot of time, I'm very lucky, I get complimentary uh, publication. Sometimes it's, it's quite substantial, that publication fees, especially Q1, Q2 journal, yeah. And uh, some of the papers I got is uh, actually by invitation. So the rejection rate is not so high. Yeah, uh, yeah. we have to spend a lot of time to have a lot of engagement with uh, overseas university, especially uh, when we have chance to uh, attend conference uh, this is what I observe uh, for local researcher. Please spend full time at the conference. Yeah, not only show our face during our presentation times because uh, that twenty minutes or forty minutes is not sufficient time for other researcher in other part of the world to remember us. We we need to be there always in front of them, even asking questions and work with them. Slowly, they will know us. Uh, maybe our work is not bad. They can work with us. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And from there, relationship built. That's actually um, uh, rather uh, effective, I would say. Yeah. Okay. And and a lot of times, uh, sometimes they invite me uh, like, uh, uh, do you want to have a special issue with me uh, as a guest editor? Yeah. Yeah. I said, yeah, why, why not? Yeah. Then uh, from there, uh, yeah, we, we have start to have the special issue. Then maybe I, from there, I have uh, one or three uh, token to to waive the publication fees where this is actually quite substantial. For example, MPDI, right? 
a few, uh, a few polymer, uh, papers that I showed recently that we published. One article, the publication fees is up to like uh, six to seven thousand ringgit Malaysia. Yeah, I if I got two free token, that's a lot. Um, but all these sometimes, uh, you see, when we get all these uh, free token, right, it's also not recorded as our KPI, right? Yeah. A lot of things that we do actually is not recorded as the KPI, but it may be eventually after a few years and it is recognized. Okay, audience, so we are still uh, in a Q&A session. So if you have any questions to ask, you can uh, write uh, your questions in our chat box. Okay, Prof, the next questions, some of the publications of some of the publication and research involve data mm -hmm. that we get that we need to get from the industry so is there any ethical requirements that to a higher to comply adhere, adhere on yes uh sometimes they request us to sign nda e sign that's why uh uh it is very important uh, to give a lot of that uh to keep their confidential documents safely we do not simply share if we share only share uh, a tiny part we cannot simply share but a lot of work with them uh is actually i do the characterization which means the data is with me the characterization part but uh, the things that from them mainly from for example is uh, mscs yeah malaysia uh the the material safety data sheet or technical spec where also sometimes right uh, of course uh, the suppliers or the company will always tell you it's also secret but after dealing with them many years, or you know that I will tell them it's actually no secret. When you sell the product to your customer, you have to give. Yeah, what secrets do you have? And uh, the the information that you leak to the public and me in the MSCS and the technical specification is also so little. No, no secret as well. I must have to give it to me. I have a better interpretation. If you have so many things from me. What can I do with you? My interpretation is also very bad, the results, right? And then you cannot blame me. Later on, if you don't give me all this result, uh, 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 information, I cannot do wonders. Yeah. yeah. Researcher also cannot do wonders. Yeah. We we cannot simply guess and pluck yeah. from the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one need uh, engagement sessions. Yeah. Talk to them slowly. Show to them what we can do, what we cannot. Yeah. Even though we have a PhD, we have instrument in front of us, but we still need a lot of information. Okay. Are we still receiving? Um, still receive any questions from the audience? Okay. Um. Thank you, Prof. Uh. A very great sharing by my Sarah Sarizan. Okay, so it looks like we answered all questions. Okay, and Prof Chan, is there anything else that you would like to mention? Uh, maybe just a last uh, sharing with, I think a lot of the participants would be from the UIDM Johor, yeah, uh, uh, Campus Gamat. Uh, so it is actually i could understand it's very very difficult yeah to do research and publication i i can fully feel your pain because many years ago the hq also like that yeah it, it is not something that we can bandai bandai <laughs> solve the yeah. problem really yeah from my heart yeah, yeah. because we went yeah. through that period yeah a lot of times they say you solve the problem you can do it it give you some little space one or two then you you should come up with it. no no there are actually challenge that are valid uh the dilemma the researcher that we have it so if let's say um if, if the lab is so challenging to come up with the products uh, because you need a lot of tools then why not you do something that like what i did do not talk about the product at all the end product that you can touch you can see but expertise our expertise to help you to interpret the result. If one day I cannot access to the lab, I cannot have uh, the instrument to test, but there must be some other people have the instrument. I can advise them what to do in that instrument and take back the result. I can interpret. And that is a kind of expertise. And in Johor, you are very close to industry area, rapid, pengarang, yeah? All this, right? Thought. So, you see that you are 
very close to the industry, just that they do not know you. You also may not know them. If you can provide this kind of service to them, we can escape, right, about the challenge of the lab where our boss sometimes also, yeah, they, they try to help, but they also have limitation. Huh? Uh, they try to let us have the instrument. They have to also have limitation of the budget or whatever. So that's why whenever they have a problem, instead of like a, a complaining every day that we don't have this and that, why not we do something that what we can yeah, to the industry? Because the industry sometimes they don't need our products. Frankly speaking, they don't really need our prototype. They, what they need is something that gives them the tool, how to solve it. So I, 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 I forget about my prototype. No, I, I don't want to apply my, my PRG, the PRJ scrum because I, I couldn't make it. Because once they asked me to show some prototype, what can I show? My expertise, my service, all this is too abstract for them to see it as a prototype, even though I think I can sell it, right? I can sell it uh, with the money come in and I have the full record of how much that I can generate. But to the panel, it is not good because you do not have the product. I can show you one example. Even I won the first runner up of the MTDC uh, that pitching is national level. Yeah. And because I do not have the product from UITM, they came to me that, yeah, the, the research, I think the group that for commercialization, they advised me, you should come up with a machine to do the testing, to sell it. Well, <laughs> why should I? Uh, a lot of companies uh, will did better. And why should I be a salesman to sell the machine? My expertise is not there. So I think after a long deliberation, we decided, no, we should actually focus on what we can do best, which means, again, I say, I do not involve in operational. What? Because... We only have eight hours per day. Everybody has the same time. Huh? We, I don't want to be the salesman. Yeah? I don't want to be the manufacturers. I only want to use my time to do something that I'm good with, which means yeah. characterization, give solutions if there is a characterization procedure that needs to improve and interpretation of the result. Where a lot of people may not be doing um, as good as us or because or no, they can do, but they didn't spend time to do it. But we have time. A patient to do it so we focus on that yeah yeah right i i know i can open a, a training company they said okay i can open up a a, a, a spin-off company in uitm to do training which means i conduct training i i get customer i get them pay or whatever but you see all this will take times right i mean I'll consume a lot of my times so i cannot do so many things if i focus that which means i don't give up a lot of other range of the service that i can offer it is one of the way but uh, I decided, no, uh, let the expert, uh, the training company do their work. I just provide training material. I don't really want to be the trainer as well because if it takes a lot of my time, I train the trainer and they use my training materials. I'm, I'm For example, it's something like RP, resource person. The resource person is a role that we can do very well because we are, we are, the, we are doing it in the UNIC. Yeah, it's true. Okay, Frog, last Frog. question. Suddenly we, we, we got question from the audience. Should the structure of the publication need to be reviewed by the person in industry? What do you mean structures? Uh, normally, industry people, they, they don't care, you know, so much of what Q1, they, they don't understand what is ISI journal, Scopus journal conference proceeding. They don't care at all. Especially when we want to publish in Q1, Q2 journal, the language that we use, uh, they don't understand. And when they look at one or two paragraphs, there they say they don't want to anything. Yeah. Don't that, huh? uh, right in the magazine, then we have to switch the language. But yeah. the main concern is uh, you don't leak their secret. Yeah, Things like they, they don't want people to know their, their formulation. We cannot tell. And we must uh, have the track record that we are the one that who can keep secret, especially you see, I have a lot of information from different pain manufacturers and they are competitors. They must trust me or else they will not give those information to me, which means that um, when uh, PBG came to me to know what Jordan give it to me, I will never give. No. And the same times I wouldn't do it vice versa including the instrument supplier. I can Perkin, Elmer, Brooker, Agilent, all these, right? Yeah, they came in and they support. 
they also will tell us that uh, their product is the best. So they also give me a lot of internal um, uh, information about other people's product. So we have to keep all this information, which means we have to uh, establish a track record that we are a reliable person who can, a person that uh, can keep information from the company. We will not simply share it. Yeah. Okay, I think we have, we got one question. Prof Chan, we got one question here from Husnizan Hossein. Yeah. How to manage time, uh, how to manage time wisely with the, I can, I cannot see clearly. Uh, I think I can read the okay. how to manage how time How to manage wisely. time wisely with the teaching, research, and your daily life activities. Oh, this is a very tough question. In fact, it is a very tough. So, of course, my husband because complained. You, very because busy. because <laughs> your post, you as scientist, appointed as chairperson in, in a few universities, universities. So, I think this is a very good question. Yeah, in fact, it's a very, a very, very tough questions. Basically, I can tell you that I do not have weekend. Yeah, which means whenever I have time, it's, it's actually working time because everything is have timeline. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 of course, I have to acknowledge my pet, uh, my mother who's there with me, who take care of my kids. That that help me a lot that I can concentrate on my work. Yeah, and my husband are. Uh, even though he complained, but in yet he is still very supporting for my work. And uh, because of uh, my involvement in a lot of uh, organizations, yeah, and also uh, UNIC research work and all this, right? That's why I have to decide what is my priority work. I cannot do so many things. So I, I make up my mind, I will not do operation work, especially for industry. No, I can only spend time to do provide solution. Things come to operation. No, no, I, I will not. Even though they offer, let's say, a grant to me and do it, uh, uh, let me to have, let's say, the main contract uh, contractors and then subcon to others. Th this kind of work, maybe we can generate more and more income. But it's, to some extent, I will neglect some of my research work because coordination and all this with different companies for different tests, huh, it is very time consuming. And I think uh, I, 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 I I'm not really good in that. I, I don't really have that expertise. Yeah, let the I I would say let the professional do the profit their, their professional work. Yeah, I I can only do whatever that I can. Yeah. And and one important things are when we work with the industry is our relationship with the industry has to be quite good. Yeah, have to be responsive. Sometimes we receive call at night. Yeah, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, because they really have problem in the plan, we need to be ready to answer them. And for many years, before we have the track record, they're willing to pay uh, the service that we offer. For many years, actually, I offer free service to them first to show that uh, we are capable to provide solutions and not as what they claim, the university uh, lecturers or researcher only know how to spend government money to research and present at the conference and provide no solutions uh, to the industry. It is not easy to break that kind of uh, uh, perceptions. So we need to spend a bit of time to convince them. Okay, thank you, Prof Chan. Okay. Uh... Well, we got Bo Boon Yi Tian here. Thank you, Prof Chan. It will be very amazing if can collaborate with you. I am motivated with your journey. Yeah, me too. <laughs> sure, sure. Please, uh, please. Uh, come, come to me. Especially uh, right now, I have a mission uh, to train up uh, uh, um, the uh, lecturer from the branch. Uh. I know that because 
the HQ lecturer have a lot of resources. They don't see that this is a very crucial for them because they have a lot of resources to do academic research. Uh, if you ask them to do industry research, they may not be very keen at the moment. Sometimes, uh, of course, some of them are keen, but I, I can see that the brand lecturers, you might have the limitation to do, let's say, FRGS grant and all this. You have even uh, sometimes I was told that you're not allowed to apply this grant and that grant. All these limitations, where, frankly speaking, I don't understand. Huh? But that, that's a uh, that's, uh, situation. So, and I think, um, in especially the Joho, uh, UITM Joho, you, you can do better than me because you have a lot of SME in Pasir Gudang, in uh, this uh, uh, rapid, right? It's just, uh, um, yeah, engagement with them. So, uh, yeah. If you need me to be there with you, maybe after MCO, I'm, I'm happy to come here to, to work together uh, with you, like how we can call, because I'm uh, with IMM, so maybe I, we can organize some function, invite the industry to come to your campus to look at your facility, talk to your, your researcher, but do not hope that one time you meet them, things will come, be fruitful. You need a lot of engagement sessions to show to them that we are serious of, about our work. We don't give up. Yeah, and uh, UNIC lecturers are serious. We are not talking about the moon and the, and the star and then not something that on the ground. We are the one that who talk about the basics. We are here to solve your problem, even though sometimes uh, maybe at first, if you have no trust to us, no problem, we offer free service. Yeah, of, of course, cannot be free service forever. Yeah, we also must make them understand, right? <laughs> to some extent, yeah, if it's work, they have to pay accordingly. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, Prof. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think. Uh, okay. I think we are now uh, come to the end part of our uh, program. So yeah, anyone, would like to... if you would like to uh, know more uh, about our work, want to work with me, our group, yeah, please drop me an email. I, I guess you have my email or you search uh, from the UITM Salam, the, the uh, no, 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 no more Salam, UITM email. Uh, you type my name, I think they, they will come up, yeah, my email address. Yeah, please, uh, welcome. I'm happy Thank to work with you. Thank you, Prof. It's yeah. something like very inspired us, you know, motivating us, uh, especially to our young lecturers, young researchers. Okay. Yeah, you so are you are not alone. I, I yeah, I start with uh, MT Labs as a lot of others. We understand that truly understand your pain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, we would like to say uh, thank you so much to our speaker, Prof Chan. Uh, Prof. Melissa? Yeah, you can call uh, me Melissa because it will be uh, uh, more friendly. <laughs> so for the information sharing and I, I can say interesting talk and to our audience as well, okay, for their active participations. So I hope uh, this uh, webinar will be beneficial for everybody. So uh, thank you, Prof. And uh, take care. Uh, we hope uh, we can invite you uh, later uh, to share uh, uh, and uh, to collaborate more in terms of uh, uh, grant sharing, uh, you know, knowledge uh, transfer. Okay. Yeah. So uh, thank you again. That's all from thank us. You. Thank you, all our audience participants. Thank you. Take care and stay safe. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.